Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar with teddybaldassar.com. In this video, we're looking at a watch from Longines with the Military Marine Nationale. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldassar.com, as a full authorized dealer. So in this video, deep dive on this watch, final points of consideration at the end, and also throughout this video, if you have further questions, check out the link in the description to the product page where you can learn more, purchase the watch, and book a time with one of our dedicated watch specialists as well. But guys, let's jump into the video, take a closer look at this watch. Shortly after the Second World War in 1947, Longines provided the French Navy a capable, multi-purpose military watch that could do a little bit of everything, including some shallow water diving. This piece was known as the Reference 5774, a 33 and a half millimeter field style watch with a big boxy acrylic crystal, a large crown, a highly reliable movement for the time, and an easy to read dial. It was a solid, reliable watch that today has served as the inspiration for the Heritage Military Marine Nationale. Gone is that 33 and a half millimeter case, which has been replaced by an upsized case for the modern market and features one of the more interesting dial executions on the market in this price range. As we take a look at the Heritage Military Nationale on the wrist, let's run down those upsize case dimensions. It comes with a substantially larger case than the original 1947 model to accommodate today's modern market, but is still moderately proportioned at 38.5 millimeters in diameter, a 12.3 millimeter case height, including a box sapphire crystal, and it has a lug-to-lug -lug length of 48.5 millimeters. The case profile is rather flat, and while there is a little downward curvature to the lugs, they seem to jettison outwards rather than down towards the wrist. This makes the case look and wear a little larger than you might expect from a 38.5 millimeter case, wearing a millimeter or so larger. With the relatively compact dial size, the vintage aesthetic captures the post-World War II military design about as well as you'll find from any modern reissue. It's also a refined look with a mix of polished anterior case surfaces from the step bezel through those elongated drilled lugs. Contrasting brush finishes are found along the sides of the case as well as on the case back. The finishing execution is quite good as transitions between the contrasting styles are done with excellent precision, so there is no bleeding over from one surface to another. A large dome push-pull crown is positioned at the side of the case in the typical three o'clock position. It has two operating positions, as you might expect. Hand winding the caliber within can be done with the first position, and setting the time is done at the farthest extended point while stopping the second hand in the process, so hacking seconds here. The strap choice in this variant is a 19 millimeter genuine leather strap in a rich caramel color. Access to the spring bars is provided via drilled lugs, allowing you to easily remove or install the strap when needed. The strap has a decent amount of padding to it, yet conforms to the wrist pretty well and will not need any break-in really off the bat. The hardware is a polished pin buckle that is a little more elaborate than most buckles out there, with sculpted sides and the raised edge along the top to go with the embossed wing hourglass logo in the center. Turning our attention to the dial, we are confronted with that large dome sapphire crystal with its multi-coats of anti-reflective coating, both protecting the elements within while also providing an error-correct visual with a modern material. Now here we have a fascinating dial execution in that Longines has not only delivered an on-point rendition of the original reference, but they've gone as far as distressing the dial surface to give it an aged look. Now when most people think of the artificial aging type effect or that patina look with a watch like this, most of the brands are going to opt for going for that faux loom rather than something like this execution. But I think this combination of really focusing on the dial rather than the hands or the markers to really give it that aged look is going to feel less forced in its execution. The dial surface isn't the only place where we see this aged design execution take place. It's also carried over the bold Arabic numerals and into the hands where Longines uses a dark brown superluminova to further enhance this aesthetic. That said, not nearly done to the same degree as most brands are going to opt for. Speaking quickly about Loom, it's not going to be the greatest out there. When it is charged and glowing, you will see it with its green illuminating material and then will quickly fade after some time. In terms of the dial layout, it's very focused and simple with its approach with an emphasis on legibility as proper military watches are, such as the original 57. Beyond the Arabic hour markers, the dial elements include a minute track printed along the outside of the hour markers themselves and the finely printed old school Longines logo at the 12 o'clock position with the phrase Fob Swiss printed just below. 
a phrase that is similar in meaning to Swiss made today, but back then it complied with the specific French import laws concerning French sounding products that weren't manufactured in France. Charged with the time telling duties are a set of tempered blue steel pencil style hour and minute hands, as well as a cool but somewhat elaborate second hand that takes on a leaf shape at the base near the pinion, but otherwise is extremely thin as it extends away from its base. All told, this is a very charming way to reimagine a vintage watch in a philosophy that I think places Longines as one of the premier vintage reissues in the world right now. Turning this military marine nationale over, we have a flat brushed screw down case back with some inscribing of different technical information, including the reference as well as the water resistance rating. That point of water resistance is going to be probably the number one downside as you look at a watch like this. When you're dealing with a watch with aquatic undertones with something like Marine Nationale being in its name, this is going to be a difficult thing to stomach for some enthusiasts. I think everything from the design perspective looks great, uh, but 30 meters does leave a bit to be desired here to say the least. Inside this case back though is a very solid movement, the L888 movement. This is one of several different variations within this line of movements. This is the 0.5, so this is going to be based off the Etta 2892-2. All these movements are made specifically for Longines by Etta and are made with some great modifications. One of the most notable changes is going to be the drop from the beat frequency from 28,800 vibrations per hour to 25,200 vibrations per hour in order to take the 4 hertz down to 3.5 hertz, allowing this power reserve to be extended from a typical 42 hours up to 72 hours in this variant. Accuracy and precision are top notch. These are going to be running, although not certified as chronometers, in the range of chronometer specification. This one for anecdotal evidence was running at just three seconds off from perfect time of day. Another modification with this movement from Longines is going to be the inclusion of a silicon balance spring as well. And this is also one of the movements that is sent in for some of their chronometer certified uh, watches. Again, this one not being actually sent in for that certification, but still very capable movement on the inside here and one of the best in the price range. And looking at general specifications for this movement, it's operating at 25,200 vibrations per hour, 3.5 hertz. It does feature hacking and hand winding, hacking stopping the second hand when you pull the crown to the farthest position, and has a 72 hour power reserve. So now to unpack looking at this watch, some final points of consideration. In terms of the actual design of this piece, I think this is just Longines again at their best when it comes to what they deliver from a design perspective. These heritage reissues are always so well done from the looks department. In regards to some other points that I would just bring up, case finishing is great, but some people might have some issue with those longer lugs. Uh, this is something that you've seen from other variations within the heritage collection of this brand. Uh, one that comes to mind is the Legend Diver kind of being a bit more broad in its approach, as well as something like the Skin Diver. Seeing this in a watch that originally was 33 and a half millimeters and having that scale out quite substantially to wear like a 40 millimeter watch, if not a little bit larger, could be an issue for some people that are the normal type of buyers for these types of watches. But I think the number one miss on a watch like this is the water resistance. 30 meters just simply isn't going to be enough for a watch that's going to lean on these kind of vintage marine nationale undertones. I think 100 meters of water resistance, given the structure or foundation that this one is built upon, would have been nice to see in a watch like this. But still, a lot of the same elements that Longines delivers from their heritage collection is here. Amazing looking design, reliable movement on the inside. I enjoy how they flip the idea of how a vintage reissue should look. A lot of people are leaning on that faux loom. They didn't have to really lean on that as much in a design like this, mostly relying on a age looking dial, which just again, doesn't feel like such a forced idea. So again, a very nice, well executed, well finished watch from Longines and certainly one to consider if you can overlook the water resistance rating. All right guys, well thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. That really does help out the channel. So really would appreciate that. But also if you're in the market for this watch, check it out, link in the description. It's available on teddybaldasar.com. We're a full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, also are going to offer a full factory warranty for all of our products. So if something goes wrong, you're going to be covered. And also this is how we fund all of our future content on this channel, as well as on our main channel, helping to foster up a new generation of watch enthusiasts in the process. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.